Hello everybody, let's get straight to it. Today we will be talking about default order settings in new Dynamics 365 for operation. This functionality was covered by many different articles in Dynamics X 2012, so now let's take a look at how it works in Dynamics 365. When on release product form, navigate to manage inventory form and the first thing you will notice that there is default order settings but there is no more site specific order settings. These two forms have been now merged. When we open default order settings, we see that the layout of the form is quite different. We still have our purchase order, inventory and sales order tabs, but we also have this section on the left hand side. Now I'm going to take you through a couple of examples, starting from the most simple one. One note that I have to make before we begin is that the customer that we will be using for our demonstrations does not have a default site or warehouse set on the customer master form. So if we're gonna go open our customer and navigate to sales order defaults fast up, we will see that the default site and warehouse are left blank. And that was done intentionally to prevent overrides of our default order settings done on the released product form. In my first example, I will modify the existing record that has rank of zero. This record cannot be deleted, which is very similar to item coverage form where one record, default record, cannot be deleted. I will set up my default site as site number one and my warehouse will default to warehouse 18. I will also uncheck mandatory site and warehouse checkboxes and save the record. Now I'm ready to test. I'm gonna create a new sales order for my customer Customer and gonna populate a sales order line with an item number. You will notice that the site warehouse fields remain blank. That is because my item has a configuration product dimension enabled and I need to make that selection before defaults will kick in. So I'm gonna pick random configuration. Once I pick a configuration, for example, 330B, I will see my site and warehouse got populated with defaults that I set under my default order settings. Now let's go back to our default order settings and make our site and warehouse mandatory by checking those two checkboxes. Save the changes go back to our sales order and let's try to change the warehouse from warehouse 18 to something else. For example, warehouse 12. You can see the warehouse got changed, but when we try to save that change, we will see a warning message saying that the item transactions must be for warehouse 18. So the system stopping you from changing warehouse to anything but warehouse 18. I will change it back to warehouse 18, save the change and the error message will disappear. Now let me show you another thing. If I try to change my default site from one to, for example, three, you will notice that this change does not happen at all. My site always remains as one. So that's a slight difference compared to a warehouse change. In my next example, I will create a new record in my default order settings. Let's do that. I'm gonna click on new and you will see that I would break that form down into two separate sections. The first one, which is the one here on the top, I would call input section. That's where I define my input site and configuration that can be used. On the bottom there, I have three output sections. So those are default sites and warehouse that will be specified once the selection matches the one on the input section. So in my example, I will set my site as one as my input site and leave configuration blank. I will then change override default storage dimension and I will override my default warehouse 18 to warehouse 12. And I will also make it and leave it as mandatory warehouse. We're gonna save the change and test it. We're gonna create a new sales order line, pick site one, and we will see that our default warehouse got populated with, with, with house 12, not 18 that we overrode. Then you can change the configuration, but that will not change the selection on the warehouse field. One thing I would like to notice here is that unfortunately, once the record is saved, you cannot modify the site and configuration selection in your input section. The only way is to recreate the record, which is what I will do right now. In the next example, I will specify a configuration as my only input and would leave the side field blank. I will pick configuration 330A, for example, scroll down to sales order form and click on override default storage dimension. You will notice a slight difference here. I now have a site as a selection in my output section. The reason being is that because my site in my input section was left blank. If I were to populate any value in my site under my inputs, you will 
will see that the site warehouse would disappear under my output. If I leave that field blank, you will see that my site selection now is available. I will now change my default warehouse from warehouse 18 to warehouse 11. Save the change and test it. Add new line. You will see site and warehouse are blank for now. And the only input that is needed is my configuration. Remember, I set up a default site and warehouse for configuration 338, which I will select right now. As soon as I've done that, my site and warehouse got populated with 1 and 11 respectively. So, so far so good, so far very simple. In my next example, I will define site and configuration as my two inputs and I will create two new records with the same ranking. The first record will have an input of site 1 and configuration 330A, ranking will be as 10 and my override or default warehouse will be warehouse 11. And I will create a new record, change the ranking to the same value of 10, site will be same site 1, but configuration will be different 330B and my default warehouse will be not 18 as it's in my first record, not 11 as for configuration 330A, but rather 12 for configuration 330B. Save the changes and ready to test. Line is added, input is populated. Now you will see that site and warehouse got populated with warehouse 11. If I change my configuration to 330B, my warehouse would change to warehouse 12. Now I will show you difference when we modify our default record, which we cannot delete, and change a default site on it from site 1, which matches the default site on my two records that I have created over here, to a different site, for example, site number 2, and warehouse will be 21. We're going to make sure those two are not mandatory. Now you will see a slight difference in behavior. Let's take a look. When line is added, and configuration is selected, you will see that the site defaults to site 2 and warehouse is defaulting to warehouse 21. The reason being is that in order to use other records I have created, I have to have two inputs, configuration as well as a new site. So if I change my site to site 1, I will notice a change in warehouse as well because my two inputs are now present and therefore warehouse should be changed to reflect that. If, however, I change my configuration from 338 to 330B, you will see a strange behavior where the site and warehouse are reset back to my defaults of 2 and 21. So that's a small thing that I think Microsoft can improve upon. I would keep the site as site 1 and I would probably just change the warehouse to reflect configuration change. But for us to make it happen right now, we need to reset site to site number 1 and then our warehouse would reflect that change and set to 12, which is a default for configuration 330B site 1. In my last example for today, I will show you the meaning of ranking. For this purpose, I will create two records. The first record will have an input of so site 2 only, will have a default warehouse of 22. And for my second record, I will keep my site 2, but my other input would be also configuration 330A. And in this case, my default warehouse will be not 21, not 22, but rather 23. So let's summarize it. The first record has only one input, site 2, and that should drive my default warehouse to 22. My second record has an input of site 2 and configuration 330A, and my default warehouse for this should be warehouse 23. You will notice that I keep my ranking 20 for this record. The basic idea here is the higher the ranking number, the higher the priority of that record over others. So let's test it. Line is added. Let's select site 2. We will see that because the only input right now is site, my warehouse is defaulted to 22, which is a setting for only one input of site 2. If, however, I add another input, which is configuration, we will notice a change in warehouse to reflect that two inputs are present now and warehouse will change to warehouse 23. Now let's go back to default or settings and do one thing. Let's move the priority. Let's change the priority for the record configuration 338 to a lower one. We can use this ranking buttons and I'm going to click on move down and you will see that my uh, record now has a priority of 10, which is lower than the priority of 20 for the record that has only site as an input. Once we save that change, we are ready to test it. Added the line, 
and let's do our input of site 2. So far, no surprises. We have only one input of site 2 and the output for that is warehouse 22. Now remembering my previous example, as soon as I selected configuration 330A, my warehouse got changed to 23. Let's do that again. Once that change is done though, my warehouse remains as 22. That is because the rank of the record for the configuration end side is 10, which is lower than the rank of the record with just side 2. Therefore, this record takes precedence and therefore default warehouse remains as 22. I hope you got some useful information from this video blog. Come back for more.